Implicit in Mulvey's argument is an outline for happy endings. In a standard Hollywood feature, a happy ending is virtually synonymous with marriage or the potential for marriage and ultimately the formation of a family. Most narratives involve some sort of disruption of social order. Happy endings are the result of a restoring of social stability, restoring of harmony and order. And is there anything more representative of social order and stability than the kind of heterosexual coupling and the family unit, at least within our culture? So as we found in Mulvey's essay, the cinema in general aims to, what it aims to do is to restore social order by placing characters in their proper role. The positioning of characters is typically related to the kind of the Oedipal narrative. And just briefly, I assume that not everyone is familiar with the Oedipal narrative. So Oedipus, this is an ancient story, uh, an ancient play uh, written by a playwright named Sophocles in Greece. And um, in this play, Oedipus was born to the king, Laos, and the queen, Jocasta. And the happy couple went to a fortune teller to find out what might lay ahead for their newborn son. The fortune teller informs the couple that Oedipus will grow up to kill his father and sleep with his mother. Horrified, and they order a, ser uh, a servant to go out to a field and kill their son. But the, ser the servant is softy and allows Oedipus to live. Oedipus um, grows, is actually, he's, uh, the servant leaves him in a field and some, somebody passing by picks him up and this passerby um, takes him back to his home territory. And so Oedipus grows up ignorant of his past in a different kind of uh, city. And as a young man, Oedipus ventures out into the world and unknowingly fulfills his fate. He ends up killing his father and marrying his mother and having children by her. Now, no one is aware of the situation. And one of the things that happens during this play is that and plagues are raging throughout um, the city of Thebes. And so Oedipus, um, when he um, becomes older, he decides that he's going to go out into the world. And so he's marching down the road towards the city of Thebes, and he comes upon an elderly man. And the elderly man says, you know, Get out of my way. And Oedipus has no patience and kills the man. Oedipus arrives at the city of Thebes, finds the plague. This, there's a sphinx there that requires him to answer uh, some riddle. Oedipus answers it su successfully, and um, his reward is that he gets to marry the queen of Thebes. Unbeknownst to him, on the way, he's actually murdered his father, the elderly man he passed on the road, and the reward that he gets for answering the, the Sphinx's question is marrying, actually, his mother. Now, eventually, it... Um, the plagues return to Thebes, and it's up to Oedipus, now the king of Thebes, to figure out what is going wrong. And eventually he finds out that actually it is him. He is the source of the impurity of the city. He is the source of the plagues raging the city. Um, and he 
finds out that in fact that he has murdered his father and has slept with his mother and um, has children by her. So horrified by his discovery, Oedipus um, pokes out his eyes and exiles his, himself. Oedipus's mother uh, hangs herself and you know, anyways. You know, obviously this is a tragic story, but one of the things that, that happens here is that uh, with this tragic story, everybody is put back into their proper place. Everyone is put back into their proper position. And so, and people who have violated uh, certain taboos, have, have violated certain prohibitions, these actions that kind of order and harmony is restored to the city.